For the last two years, I've done all my creative work on a dual 32 inch 4K monitor setup. And for the most part, I really enjoyed having that extra screen real estate for programs like Premiere, Blender and Photoshop. But over time, I just got really sick of a number of things related to having a dual monitor setup. So after many hours of research and countless YouTube videos, I finally decided to upgrade to one single monitor. This is the 40 inch 21 by 9 5K 2K nano IPS ultra wide monitor from LG. Now to clarify, this isn't actually 5K. 5K for a monitor of this size would need to be 6720 by 2880, whereas this monitor is 5120 by 2160. As a reference, this thing is basically a 4K monitor vertically with a few extra horizontal pixels. But because of the size increase, the pixel density is about the same as a 32 inch 4K monitor, as you're basically using those additional horizontal pixels to stretch the monitor out those extra eight inches. But to be honest with you, from my time using it at its full resolution and comparing it to my 32 inch 4K monitors, this thing's definitely sharper and noticeably sharper in things like small text and images. And that's not a result of there being more resolution. I would say that's a result of the nano IPS display putting those pixels to better use than say my cheaper 4K monitors that just have the resolution available. It has a display port 1.4, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two HDMI ports, and also has two additional USB 3.0 type A ports to turn your monitor into a hub and comes with all the necessary cables to put these to good use. Now for me, I do everything off my custom PC. So I'm running this monitor connected to my PC via the display port. And then I have my Lacey 6 big connected to one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports, which just allows me to have less cables coming out of my PC, run the cable for the Lacey 6 big through the monitor arm and into the monitor itself, which is kind of a hidden benefit of a monitor like this, if you aren't someone using the Thunderbolt 4 ports for connection, you have those ports available to connect other Thunderbolt devices if your PC allows Thunderbolt connection. But if I was to use my MacBook Pro with this setup, the Thunderbolt 4 ports deliver a whopping 96 watts of power, meaning that I could have my MacBook powered and connected to the monitor via one cable, and then have all the extra ports on the monitor available for things like my keyboard and external drives, just leading to a more clean and simple work setup. Now, this monitor is targeted primarily at creatives and productivity enthusiasts. So the refresh rate is only 72 Hertz, meaning this isn't the best monitor for the most serious gamers. But for the majority of people, let's be honest, this won't be an issue. If you're someone like me who occasionally games to unwind and the extent of your competitive experience is trying to beat your PB lap time around Albert Park in an F1, then 72 Hertz is more than enough. The philosophy I'm really trying to embrace as my space continues to develop is the idea of less is more. I think in the past I've had a tendency to just include way too much in my space and way too much in my creative process too. I think that's the thing. I think if simple desk setup encourages a simple creative process and I think a general thing that I'm trying to embrace more and more these days is to just simplify things, dumb it down and make it easy to be consistent. And it's the same with your desk setup. If you've got a very simple desk setup, it's gonna make it much easier day to day to get the work you need to get done, done. And for me, having two monitors, although in theory seems useful, in practice, I never really used it for more than a glorified whiteboard. I might have a browser open or something that I'm looking at at a glance open, but it was only really used because it was there, not because it was needed. This just meant that for my most important creative tasks day to day, they all just happened on my primary monitor, meaning that I was missing out on 50% of my total screen space. I wasn't ever actually finding myself splitting these tasks across both screens, because in most cases, it's just kind of impractical. And that's not even mentioning the space that two monitors take up. Twice the monitors means twice the amount of cables, twice the amount of stands, and twice the amount of space taken up on your desk. For me, that just became more of a nuisance than a benefit over time. A little extra benefit, and I know this one's kind of a nice to have benefit, but in my opinion, switching to one monitor has simplified my desk setup so nicely. And as a result, it all comes together just that little bit better. In my opinion, 40 inches is the perfect size for just about any creative task. It's big enough that you're benefiting a lot from the extra horizontal screen size and is more than enough to fill your entire field of view when sitting at your desk. But at the same time, it's not so big that you're constantly having to turn your head to see either end of the screen, which might not sound like too much of an issue, but if you're someone like me using your monitor for eight to 12 hours a day, this can easily lead to headaches, eye strain, and just general work fatigue. For my day-to-day -day work, I usually have Notion open on the left side 
side of my screen and a web browser open on the right, allowing me to research and script at the same time. And then when editing, I allow my timeline to fill the entire screen, which after coming from a 32 inch screen feels incredible. Even programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, which I didn't expect to experience as much of a benefit, have both felt just that little bit nicer to use with a little bit more room for layers, sliders and menus either side of the image that I'm working on. And then if I do want to reference some of my past posts or reference colors on a particular image online, I have the ability to split my image into two sections and not lose out too much on the space I have for Photoshop or Lightroom. And yeah, let's be honest, these benefits are small moment by moment, but I think the accumulative effect of a more enjoyable experience whilst you're at work is profound. For a creator, color is by far the most important thing to consider when choosing a monitor. If you're unfamiliar with this sort of stuff, you might not actually be aware that not all monitors have accurate color reproduction, which basically means that if you're creating videos and images and sharing them on Instagram and YouTube, what you see in your viewport or your editing software might actually end up being different to what you then see online. With this monitor, however, that will not be an issue. It has a DCI-P3 coverage of 98%, which just for reference, DCI-P3 has a color gamut of around 25% wider than sRGB, which is the standard color profile of platform platforms like YouTube and Instagram. On top of that, this monitor comes color calibrated straight out of the box, which you'd kind of expect from most monitors, but that isn't the case at all. My previous two monitors came with colors that were so far off that I had to spend hours tweaking them to the point that it was somewhat usable. And even then the coverage of those monitors wasn't actually high enough to cover even the sRGB color gamut. So I was constantly having to reference my exports on my iPhone before posting anything online. So having a monitor with incredible color accuracy, as well as a factory calibration is maybe the single most important factor when it comes to choosing a monitor. And in my opinion, like I said, I think 40 inches is the perfect size for almost all content creators. Any bigger and you're paying more for the size than the quality and any smaller and you're missing out on screen real estate. At 2,300 Australian dollars, I really do feel like I'm paying for a quality display and not just the size or features. With something bigger like a 49 inch display, most of your budget goes into the sheer size of the monitor itself and you end up losing out on resolution. At the end of the day, I just think this is one of the best options for content creators like myself. If you make your money making content on the internet or have ambitions to do so, I think the screen that you choose to do that on is an incredibly important purchase. And to skip out on that and choose something cheap, to me seems like a massive oversight. It's like a painter choosing poor quality paints or a supermarket grade canvas to create their masterpiece. Yeah, a good artist is gonna be able to figure out a workaround, but you're missing out on a level of quality that can't be overstated. I hope this video has helped. I hope this video has sort of cleared up any questions you have around monitors or given you an option if you are on the search. I know how many YouTube videos you've probably gone through trying to find something that's suitable for you. So I hope this video has helped at least a little bit. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. And with all that said and done, I'll see you guys next time.